everybody. Welcome back to My View, My Opinion, a commentary program where we get together on any given day at any given time. And I present to you some trending story happening out there in the world or some trending conversation taking place somewhere out there in social media. And I take what's happening out there and I do my best, although I'm not always successful, to relate it to what's happening in here and here on the inside of us. Okay. So thanks for joining me for another episode. If you are curious about who I am, why you don't actually see me. You only hear me. What's my name? What am I doing? Who am I? I always get asked, are you black or white? What? (laughs) Check the description box. Okay. All that information, believe it or not, is yes. Even the answer to that question is in the description box. Okay. Now today I want to continue a conversation that I've been having with all of you listening who are single. And we've talked about this before that, you know, everyone's at different places in their life. And so there are a lot of single women who do want to get married. They just don't want to get married right now, right? Maybe they're in a shift or change in their life, Um, but they do want companionship. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? There's nothing wrong with dating, having a male companion, having someone that you go to the movies with, go out to eat with, that you exercise. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So we've talked about all of that. Well, if you were with me, Um, I gave you some stories about some of my friends who are single and some of the stuff that they called and told me and all this kind of stuff. And I, I kept hammering in the importance of giving yourself time to see who a man really is. And we talked about those seven scientifically based character traits that make a man a good quality man. There ain't nothing else. Everything else that you think Uh, about that is something that you desire. So we made a distinction between those seven characteristics versus a woman's personal desires. Okay. And I told you, if you left our conversation and it got confusing for you again, all that meant was you got back in the maze of the Christian gurus, the the relationship gurus, the TikTok videos, the, the such and such and the such and such, because choosing a guy to date or marry is so simple. Even if you super duper uber spiritualize it, all you're doing is causing yourself problems. And let me tell you something. I got some stories on that. Okay. So today I want to continue hammering it in the importance of truly getting to know a man before you get really serious with him. And sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes because you're more mature, you do move a little bit faster. But what I try to say when I'm asked is pay attention, pay attention all along the way. Enjoy the feelings, enjoy the emotions. God gave us feelings and emotions when it comes to love for a reason because they they feel great. It feels great to have someone that you can really talk to and connect with. That Those things are meant to be enjoyed, but you got to pay attention at the same time. And so as I share with you guys, my advice to single women has always been, and it hasn't changed for years, keep a log. Because you got to have checks and balances in place because you are a woman and you're going to do what all of us women have done before, have the potential to do or may do again, which is make excuses for the bad character or bad behavior you see in a man because you really like him. And so you got to know who you are as a woman. You got to know your own nature. So many women I talk to, they don't seem to understand their own basic nature as a woman. And that is really sad. So let me tell you the story about the super duper uber spiritual guy and the age story. So many, many, many years ago, okay, like a thousand years ago, I had a friend. She and I used to work together and we became very close friends because we were both spiritual women, Christian women. And at that time we were both single. And so she was much older than me. So she was kind of like a big sister to me. And uh, she was out there dating and trying to meet someone because she had decided she was ready to get married. Well, she had visited this church, which in the city we were in, that church was known for having more men visit that church than any church in that city that, you know, most people had known of. And so they used to have these events on Saturday night, et cetera. So she was going. So one time she met this guy there. And, uh, you know, he expressed interest in her right away. They exchanged phone numbers, et cetera, et cetera. So she called me and she said, I want to know what you think about this. And I've always been that friend, even though most of my friends are older than me. I've always been the friend that you call and you ask, what do you think? Okay. And I have friends like that too, because I like for you to tell me the truth. Don't worry about me getting upset. I'll get upset, but I'll get over it. Okay. But what ain't going to happen is you let me do something or you don't tell me the truth. And then when I do it, you come back and say, well, I knew that was a bad decision. Well, how come you didn't tell me? You just sat there and didn't say nothing. Okay, this is, we ain't going to be friends for long. So she called me 
And she said, oh, I met so-and-so. And so she started telling me about him. Oh, he's so fine. He's so handsome. He loves God. He's spirit filled. Then she started telling me some of the stuff he said, which was one of which was that he was looking for a wife. And so you know how it is when a man is looking for a wife, they're pretty serious about it. Like they take, it's like a job to them and they will ask you a bunch of questions. It's almost like an interview. Most men are like this, who are truly serious about a wife. They don't want to waste any time. See, men aren't like us. They're very, very practical when it comes to finding a spouse. Okay. So she was telling me that he said to her that any woman he met, if she didn't pray every day and read the Bible every day, he was not interested in her. And she told me some other things. Then she said this. He also told her that he hasn't had sex in seven years. As soon as she said that, I stopped her and I said, he has a problem. And she got mad at me. And she said, oh, so, oh, so you're trying to say that folks can't live holy. You're trying to say the whole, the power of the Holy Ghost ain't enough to keep somebody. You know, she went on. All, I said, I did not say any of that. But what I'm telling you is if you're telling me this man told you that he has not had sex in seven years, I'm telling you there's something wrong with him. And so she, you know, we just went back and forth about holiness and blah, blah, blah. So basically, you know, it wasn't a good conversation. We wound up getting off the phone. Now, sometime after that, it was not that long. It was so long ago, y'all, I can't remember. I just know it wasn't that long. So maybe like a month or so, she called me and she said, I want to talk to you about something. Now, we hadn't talked that I can recall now, you know, since that troubling conversation when I told her he has a problem. He has a problem. And the reason I said he has a problem, for those of you may be wondering, is that is not normal, even for a man who is who loves God. You see, at some point he would have what we used to call backslidden in those seven years. See, I at that point in my life, I had learned this life principle, which is when somebody tells you something, hear me well, when somebody tells you something and as soon as you hear it, it don't sound right to you, that's because it ain't right. And it means one of two things, either they're lying to you or they're leaving out something very vital. See, I had learned at that point, trust your gut, even when it doesn't make sense. So when she first told me, he said to her, he hadn't had sex in seven years. That didn't sound right to me. And even though I couldn't explain it or whatever, I listen, it didn't sound right. I said, he got a problem. Well, like I said, she called me and she said, I want to talk to you about something. She says, very serious. So you're going to want to sit down. So I was like, okay. I didn't know it was about him. So she winds up telling me that at this point, they'd gone out a few times. And because he was looking for a wife and she was looking for a husband, they weren't going out to Six Flags. They were meeting and they were having some serious conversations. So she said to me, you know, you were right. And I said, what it, what happened? She said, he wound up telling her that he had AIDS. Not HIV, he had AIDS. So I said to her, oh, so that's the real reason he hadn't had sex in seven years. He didn't want to infect nobody. See, he had lied to her. See, he came, He tried to tell her the reason why that he hadn't had sex in seven years is because he loved God. He was living holy. He was just so this, so that, so this, so that. See, it didn't sound right. And, you know, she told me some other things he told her. And so I said to her, well, did he tell you how he contracted it? She said, no. I said, did you ask? She said, no. And at that point, because she was so desperate, she was considering moving forward with him. She was like, oh, well, we can work around it. So I said to her, listen, if you're, I wouldn't move forward with that. But if you're saying that's what you're going to do, you need to have the courage to ask him how he contracted it. Because based on what he tells you, that's a whole nother bag of worms. I said to her, there's only a few ways. Now, let me just remind everyone, this was a long time ago. They didn't have the drugs that they have for HIV AIDS now, where, you know, getting that diagnosis is not a death sentence. At that time, it was a death sentence. So I said to her, there are only a few ways he could have gotten it. Either he's bisexual or he's gay. He got it through that sex or he had some drug problem. You know, at that time, and I guess the research may have changed, but at that time, research showed that it was very unlikely, I can't remember the stat, that a man would contract HIV from a female because, and we got to get real technical here, you know, men inject fluids into a woman. We don't inject any fluids into a man. And so therefore, you know, because you can't get HIV just, you know, from, you know what I mean. 
there would have to be some exchange internally of fluids, meaning something going in him and so you, you get what I'm saying. So again, the, the research may have changed. And let me tell you something. If you've got AIDS and you're finna go on some whole diatribe, take it somewhere else. I don't even want to hear it. I'm just telling you the real flat out truth, okay? Not trying to be insensitive, but if I really wanted to know, I'd look it up. Trust me. So the fact that I haven't looked it up means it's not that important to me, okay? So anyway, so she, you know, and I said to her, well, if you're going to move forward, you need to ask him because, I mean, he, whatever he, that's if he's going to be honest because he lied to you in the beginning. So you already know he has a propensity to lie, you know? Um, and so anyway, so we, we just began to talk about how when you meet a man who's super duper, uber spiritual, normally they're hiding behind that spirituality. There's something they're hiding and that, you know, you know, I don't have any scripture for that. Y'all I'm just telling you what life experience has shown me. I've, you know, a lot of, you know, I used to do investigative interviews as well. And so a lot of the things I've learned, I've taken from those, those interviews. I don't have a scripture for this. I can't point you to any scripture. I just know what I've seen consistently that when you meet a guy and he is, I'm not talking about spiritual. See, don't get, don't get this twisted. I'm talking about a man who is so dead dog on religious with things. Like he when he said to her, a woman who doesn't pray every day and read her Bible every day was not somebody he's interested in. See, that's not even being realistic. A lot of us strive to read and pray daily, but life happens. And so when you meet someone who's super duper uber spiritual, meaning they don't leave any room for busyness or, you know, life. And they're so dogmatic. I'm telling you, that person has some sort of a problem. And spirituality, unfortunately, is what they've chosen to hide their problem. by. see, when he first met her, he can't. He told her he hadn't had sex because of this and that. And he just lives. He believes in living holy. No, the guy was HIV positive. He had AIDS. He didn't want to infect anybody. That's why he hadn't had sex in seven years. See, that was the real truth. And thank God, you know, because there are, you know, folks who. I mean, all a man got to walk up to them and say, especially if she's been lonely for a long time, is I think you're my wife and just a few conversations and folks just go on with it. They don't, they don't, even if God spoke to somebody and said, this would be my advice. Even if someone came up to me and said, hey, sister, I want to get your advice. I feel like God told me such and such was my husband. I would still say that don't mean you need to marry him in three months. You better get to know him. You better get to know him. You better know what you're really walking into because this is your life. This is not a game. This is your life. And whatever problems that man has, you're going to have them because you are going to be in, you know, entwined in his life. So it's not that, you know, um, you need to take forever because it really don't take forever. When you really are serious about getting to know someone, listen, like I said to you guys, you know, when people call me for advice and, and it's like, oh, you know, it always starts off like that. And y'all know some of you think I'm trying to be funny. I'm not. I'm just telling you that's how it starts off. You know, after the small talk, <laughs> a sigh. And then here he comes. Oh, I didn't know he was bipolar. Wait a minute. What were you doing when you were supposed to be getting to know this man? You didn't see you didn't pay attention when you went to his house and had medication out. You didn't you see. A lot of, I'm telling you this, and a lot of you know this, a lot of problems, problematic relationships, I mean, that we get into as women, they are completely 100% avoidable if we would just pay attention. If we didn't get carried away with all of the feelings and all of that thing. If we had some, listen, I am a big proponent of getting counseling, getting help, involving a third party. And listen, that doesn't mean you have to go to formal counseling. Just involve a friend. I remember a, a thousand, two thousand years ago. Um, I was, of course, at the time, I believe I, that I wanted to get married or something. And I had met this real nice guy. And, um, you know, he just he was much older than me, which is not unusual. Um, I even when I was single, I attracted older men. And so I really liked him. But he was just so far advanced than me. I knew I needed some covering of some kind. Well, I couldn't afford to go get no counseling. So you know what? I had one of my friends and her husband. I just said, I just need y'all to help me. I need y'all to watch over me. I told her husband, I need you to watch over me because I, you know, I like him, but there's something about him. He's so much more mature than me. I feel like he could easily pull the wool over my eyes and I, and I wouldn't know it, know the difference. And I'm going to tell you something. 
I mean, he, they both took, took us on and they were like, okay, when y'all want to meet, you can meet at our house. (laughs) And so see, when I say counseling, don't think of just the traditional counseling. If you have a couple friend uh, that's married that you can say, listen, I'm really, I really like this person. I think things are getting serious. I want you to meet him. I want you just to know what's going on. Keep somebody in the loop. Loop It's called having an accountability partner too. Just somebody, several somebodies that you can, that you can bounce things off of that. Like when she called me and said, this is what he told me. This is what he told me. He hadn't had sex in seven years. And I could say he got a problem. The average healthy man is not going seven years without sex, even if he's spirit filled. He's doing something. And I know, see, when you say that all the, all the Bible thumpers come out and say, oh, the whole, you see, this is what, this is what angers me. As women, we still don't understand the biological differences between men and women. That just because you as a woman, have the ability to go several years without having sex. You're so stupid to think that men are built like that. Let me tell you something. You better get away from what this world is telling you, that there is no difference between men and women so folks can walk around claiming to be whatever they want to be. God made two distinct different sexes. And when it comes to sex and the desire for sex and how long someone can go uh, without sex, men are not like you. They're not like us. They're not built like us. As a woman, we can go years without sex. A man cannot do that. And if a man comes to you like this dude came to her and says he did it, you better believe he got a problem. If you don't, all you're doing is fooling yourself and you will eventually find out what his problem is. Another thing I told the young girls when we were talking about that whole purity movement pitfall, I said, it could be that he's hiding a health issue. So we talked about, I said, told the young girls, do you not know that when a man has diabetes, he has problems in this area of sex? So see, you got to know, you got to take time and get to know if you're getting married because you really want to have sex and you want to have a vibrant sex life. If you get involved with the man who tells you he has diabetes, you, you need to know going in, you need to do your own research. You need to go going in that you're not going to have a vibrant sex life. And I understand every man is different, but that is something very common with diabetics. Very common. So just things like this that they don't really tell you in church. They don't really say because, well, it's so taboo. But see, I'm a big proponent of you better know what you're walking into. You need to know what his health is. I remember a thousand years ago, I met a guy and he told me he had diabetes. See, I already knew. what, And I knew why he was telling me too, because he wanted me to know without saying it specifically that if we were to, you know, move forward in some serious way, I ain't going to be able, you know, I can, but <laughs> it's just not going to be able to happen maybe every day. Not even when I want it to happen, meaning him when he wants it to happen. And see, you got to know these types of things as a woman. You can't just, you got to know who you are and what you want in a relationship. And when you meet a guy, you have to be able to talk to him truthfully about who you are and your health issues and whatever else is going on with you. And he needs to be able to do the same. And when you meet a guy who isn't like that and he's super duper, Ooh, I'm I'm stressing Uber to be, I'm telling you super duper, Uber spiritual. You better believe sister. He got a problem of some kind. Again, it doesn't have to be sexual. It could be something else, but there is a problem. Now, as I end, I want to talk to you about the bodybuilder. Okay. Again, what are we talking about here? Let's get back focused here. We're talking about how important it is that you give yourself time to truly get to know a man. That's the point. When you move fast, you're going to miss something. That doesn't mean you have to go uber duper super slow. It just means you better be paying attention all along the way. And I encourage women to keep a log. It's it's just an excellent way to keep your emotions in check that you don't get carried away with the wind of lust. See, this is natural that when you meet a man and you're physically attracted to him, that honey, everything starts flowing, especially if you haven't had vitamin D and you know what I mean in a long time. All these things that God put in us as sexual beings, they start to flow and you start to think certain things and you totally won't even be paying attention to this person's character and the things he's telling you. All right, let's talk about the body builder. So builder. So I was a part of an interview. That was taking place. And I was assisting the person doing the interviewing. And um, 
Things came about without me telling you all the details to where I was talking with this person and this person was telling me. Now, when the person came into the interview, a part of getting to know this person was that he was a bodybuilder and that in that particular city and state, he was statewide known. I mean, he had won all kinds of championships, et cetera, et cetera. So I said to him, oh my gosh, it's so great that you're into health and fitness like that. See, I assumed the reason he did all that was because he was just one of those kind of guys that's really into health and fitness. Well, then he began to tell that that's not really why he does it. He said, when he was a kid, when he was very young, he was molested by a man. And in his mind, he always felt like had he been strong enough, he would have been able to fight this man off. So ever since he was a kid, he always worked out and tried to keep himself strong so that if somebody ever tried to hurt him again, he'd be strong enough to fight that person off. You could have knocked me over with a feather. I could not, I wouldn't have guessed in a million years that that is why he was doing what he was doing. See, the natural, normal assumption was this is someone who enjoys working out and fitness and health and all those things. Had he not been the kind of person that can open up and been honest, I don't really know how many people he would have actually told that. And of course, we were all very shocked. You know, you try not to show it because I'd never heard anything like that before. And again, that would have been something I would have never assumed in a million years that that was the root reason why he was into these, this health and fitness and working out. So you see, as I end, I want to just encourage you, take time and get to know a person. Talk. That's how you get to know them. Spend time with, listen, we're in this social media age and I know folks meet on apps and all this kind of stuff and there's nothing wrong with it if that's the way, you know, some people live in small towns, rural places, and, you know, there just aren't that many viable, uh, you know, single men in their area. So you better believe it. It's okay to take advantage of the dating apps in, in a smart and safe way, of course. But the importance of getting to know someone cannot be underestimated. When relationships don't work out, you want to know what people never say. They never say, I wish I would have moved faster. No, they always say, I wish I would have taken more time and gotten to know this person. Then I wouldn't have wasted, you know, a year, two years, five years of my life trying to make something work that had I just gotten to know them, I would have realized, even though this is a great person, this is not going to be a relationship that works for me. I want each of you that are single to have love in your life. I want you to be happy. I want you to be satisfied in this area of your life. And so this is why I keep sharing certain stories with you because I know people move way too fast. And listen, there is a difference between fast and rushed. There is, there is. And when you try to make every relationship, some spooky spiritual situation, or you've got to fast for 15 days and you got to pray for a thousand hours, you're going to miss something because you're overriding the natural course of relationships. You see, I know a lot of people want to just kind of skip through getting to know someone and they go straight to God and say, is this the one for me? Tell me yes or no. Is this the one? Is this the person that's supposed to be meant to be my husband? Is this the, for guys, is this the woman that's supposed to be? See, they want to skip through going through the natural process of getting to know somebody and God just tell me. And then they always walk away thinking they heard a yes. And then they marry the person. And then when it don't work out, God gets the blame. What God intends for every single person is to get to know the person you're going to marry. And yes, we know there are examples in the Bible where people didn't actually get to know each other, but you understand their culture was very different than the culture you have. This was a culture when parents chose the spouse of their children. Uh, that ain't your culture and you know it. Your mom and daddy ain't choosing nobody for you and they haven't. You do it. So when you try to override the natural process, you're going to get in trouble. I, I can promise you that because listen, we're meant to get to know people and they're supposed to get to know us so we can truly find out, is this a viable situation that could work long term? But when you skip over steps, you're going to get in trouble. When you think you met a guy who seems to be super duper uber spiritual and you just are so happy about it, you haven't looked at his character, you haven't really taken the time to get to know him, you're going to find out why he's so super duper uber spiritual. And it could be that like my friend met that guy, it could be that he's hiding something behind his spirituality like AIDS. 
Thanks so much for tuning in. Leave your comments and your thoughts below. Don't, to, don't forget to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And listen, if you're still feeling really inspired, as some people do, you're welcome to give a donation via the Cap Ash link, link that is in the description box. I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. Bye, guys.